Yeah. So this is Bjarke, he's a Danish Oldenburger um, of the old type, so he's quite a solid sort of a horse. Now we're going to look at double lunging today. Bjarke's problem is he's not going into the bin uh, when you're driving him, he's dropping his shoulder and falling in. So he's not taking his contact through here and moving away from the shoulder. As you come around the corner, you'll fall in and you have to actually hold him out with the outside rein. So, in effect, he's actually looking out to the outside, but turning to the left. I find double lunging is a good way to correct any problems like this. You can concentrate. When you're riding, you have your leg here, you've got a short rein up to your hands, so you've got a lot of support there. For a driving horse, you don't have that support from the leg. So the horse isn't going to move away from your leg. The archer goes quite nicely under saddle and easily moves away from his leg. But as soon as you go into harness, he falls in everywhere. So we need to recreate the driving situation. That's why I'm going to work the archer in his full, full bridle, driving bridle, with the blinkers and the harness. So everything feels the same. run through the equipment that I'm going to be using. So I've got the lunge rein, which is one complete piece. It's about 14 metres long. I find that's a good length. There's no connection, so you don't, you're not going to drop a rein. Um, the bit that I'm using is a butterfly with a slightly arched mouth, straight bar. I find a straight bar is a lot better to use, whether you use a Liverpool uh, a uh, butterfly or a Liverpool with a straight mouth is a lot better I find than working in a plain snaffle, a riding snaffle just doesn't work. What happens is because there's no support from the the rein and, and the leg if you look in the mouth up when, when you're working with a plain snaffle it ends up looking like that so I always say if you, if you see a bit like that, you wouldn't go into a shop and buy that and put it in the horse's mouth. But that's what they end up like. That's why the Wilson snaffle, which is, this is a driving bit, a double ringed snaffle. Um, it acts like more like a snaffle, got a more of a mullen mouth curved to the front in this particular one. The double rings work so that you fix them to the bridle and it stops by fixing them and then the reins through the rings as well it stops that sort of action happening so they're, they're quite okay but I actually find a straight bar a lot easier and a lot milder to work with now I've got the reins set up coming from the bit going up to the next trap where they would be and what I'm trying to do is recreate the whole situation so the reins are going in that direction now the reason I dropped down here then is because I'm working on the circle and I want the reins to be down and around the rump otherwise if they're up too high they're coming up through here you tend to be working with the rein over the back all the rain gets caught up under the tail and then the horse gets upset may start kicking and carrying on now the other equipment that we're needing gloves whip and of course a helmet because if I was working with a young horse anything happened they started kicking the boys of the danger of um, you know, getting kicked in the head. You need a safe area to work in. It doesn't have to be a round yard, preferably not a round yard. I like working in a square yard. About 50 by 50 meters is a good size or a dressage arena. Um, with a square yard you can use the square fences to, to work them off, changing direction. It's important that it is in a yard because if the 
if a horse gets upset, they can easily get away from you, swing around, get tangled up, and tell the horse learns what to do, and it can take a little while to learn what to do. Um, you can have some tricky situations and often better to have somebody helping you. I find horses tend to work in threes as far as understanding. So three days is what I mean. If they've never, never done it before, allow three days before they get the hang of it. Uh, if you're working on a certain problem, like we're working on Bjarka with his pulling in, I'm going to allow three days before he gets it. By the third day, I, I should generally expect that we're, we're getting progress. Bjarka's just had his teeth done, as you saw on the website. Um, we showed a picture on the website with a big hook and um, he was unable to move his jaw down so he couldn't stretch down. Now his teeth are done, there's no excuse and he's actually starting to work a, a lot nicer. It, the memory's still there, he had a lot of pain in this area here. The very sharp teeth going right up here with actual, actually uh, he had cuts inside the, the mouth. So he was actually working with his head to one side and if you tried to straighten his head he was working with his head tilted like this and if you insisted on straightening his head while you're working he thought then he was falling his brain thought that he was losing balance and he'd move like this cross his front legs to balance himself now now we have to change his programming in his in his belief and let him know that things have changed inside his head and he is able to balance himself upright. Already he's working with his head straight. He's still dropping slightly with his shoulder but after only about three minutes of work he realizes he's okay. On the next video we're going to show him working and uh, we, he will be expected to start off a little bit uneasy and then, and then work nice and balanced.